Foo Fighters. Arguably the biggest rock band on the planet. 15 Grammy Awards, including Best Rock Album five times, inducted into the Hall of Fame in 2021, and 32 million records sold worldwide. Safe to say that they're doing something right. They suffered the sad loss of their beloved drummer Taylor Hawkins in 2022. In a statement on the band's future, the group said, Without Taylor, we never would have become the band that we were. And without Taylor, we know that we're going to be a different band going forward. The band has been through a lot since forming in 1994. Divorce, fallouts, quitting members, overdoses, and even broken legs. One thing that stayed constant, though, is the name. Foo Fighters. An iconic name. Instantly recognisable. Powerful but playful at the same time. And for some reason, really fun to say in a Christopher Walken impression. Foo Fighters! <laughs> but where did this name come from? And why did Dave Grohl hate it? Keep watching to find out why this band name had its beginning shrouded in secrecy. Hi, I'm Adam. Welcome to Music Mongoose. In 1990, Dave Grohl drummed for the band Scream, a hardcore punk outfit from Washington, D.C. After dramatically breaking up mid-tour, Grohl searched desperately for his next move. He turned to Buzz Osborne, friend and frontman of the band Melvins, for advice. Osborne connected him with Kurt Cobain, and soon Grohl relocated to Seattle to join Nirvana, just in time to work on the band's second album, Nevermind. The album would help launch grunge and alternative music into the mainstream. With tracks like Lithium, Come As You Are and Smells Like Teen Spirit, Nevermind provided the welcome soundtrack for a disaffected youth. The album gained worldwide critical and commercial success. It's one of the best-selling albums of all time with over 30 million copies sold and is largely considered as one of the best albums in history. During this success, Dave Grohl was busy writing and recording his own projects, not wanting to step on the toes of Kurt Cobain, who Grohl revered as the mastermind of Nirvana. He opted to keep it secret from the group. In 2018, he told CBS Sunday Morning, Long before then, I'd been recording songs on my own and never letting anyone hear them, because I didn't really think they were that good. I didn't like my voice. I didn't think I was a songwriter and I was in a band with one of the greatest songwriters of our generation, so I didn't really want to rock the boat. To that extent, Grohl used the pseudonym Late to record his songs. He liked the idea of introducing the band on stage as Hi, we're late! Which, to be fair, is pretty funny. His first solo recordings came in the form of a cassette album called Pocket Watch, released in 1992. Ten songs of which Grohl played every instrument a proper one-man band. Despite efforts to keep himself anonymous, the cassette soon gained traction in the music industry, helped along by the colossal success of Nevermind, and demand for the cassette became overwhelming. The label it was released on even offered Grohl to distribute CDs of the album to keep up with the demand, but Grohl refused, wanting to keep it on cassettes to avoid the project overshadowing Nirvana. However, one song on the Pocket Watch album Color Pictures of a Marigold, did eventually make its way to the B-side of Nirvana's single Heart-Shaped Box, simply named Marigold. While the album Pocket Watch wasn't a Foo Fighters project or a Nirvana project, it did contain the DNA, the foundation to Dave's iconic Foo Fighters sound. This was the first glimpse into a very bright future for rock and roll. Many consider this album to be demos, in a way, for Grohl's later musical offerings. In 1994, the world was shocked with the death of Nirvana frontman Kurt Cobain. Grohl, like the rest of the band, and indeed Nirvana fans, went into mourning. In the following months, the industry speculated where Grohl would go next. Grohl reportedly turned down Tom Petty's invitation to drum for the Heartbreakers. Eight months later, Grohl, inspired by Stuart Copeland, who founded solo projects after the police, decided to record some songs himself. In the documentary Foo Fighters Back and Forth, Grohl says, I decided that I was going to take my favourite songs that I had written over the last four or five years that no one had heard, and I was going to record them at a 24-track studio down the street from my house. And he did. 
again playing every instrument himself. In that studio, he recorded what would become Foo Fighters, the debut self-titled album. But where did that name actually come from? Not wanting to use the name late anymore, Grohl found inspiration from UFO books he had been reading at the time. He also knew he needed the band to be plural. To make it clear to labels that the band was not a solo project, he landed on the name Foo Fighters, a term used in World War II to describe unidentified flying objects before the acronym UFO was used. In the summer of 1995, the debut album Foo Fighters, recorded entirely by Grohl himself, was released. On the band name, Grohl said, Had I actually considered this to be a career, I probably would have called it something else, because it's the stupidest f***ing band name in the world. Little did he know, that band would go on to dominate the next 25 years of rock music. After the success of the first album, Grohl recruited Nate Mendel on bass, William Goldsmith on drums, and Pat Smear on guitar. Goldsmith and Smear would later depart, giving way to the core lineup in 1999 of Taylor Hawkins on drums and Chris Shiflett on guitar. Speaking of rock and roll gods, did you know Arctic Monkeys owe their success to MySpace? Click the video on screen to find out how. What story from the music world would you like to see next? Drop a comment below and I'll see you next time on Music Mongoose.